What's up, Doc? What can I do for you? I still have that pain that runs here, and I still have get vertigo like every once in a while. Doc, let's do this scan here for me. This is my friend and colleague, Dr. Shireen. This is a Romberg's test. It's checking for general proprioception. Here in the heel to toe stationary test with her right foot forward, she is unsteady and she's falling to the right. With her left foot forward, you'll notice she doesn't fall left or right, but she's very unsteady and unstable. See how she's wobbling all over the place? This is an indication of why she's having dysfunction in her body. Yeah. Do this for me, hands out. Rotate. In this test, I'm looking for coordination of her hands and to see which one is unsteady. Like so slowly. I want your left hand. This is a finger to nose exam. It's checking for coordination. Normally, she should be able to touch her nose with the tip of her finger, and she does. This is normal. Once again, same thing on the right side here. And she does. I was not expecting that. I thought it would be off on the right. Look, focus on the crease between my fingers. This is a check for coordination of the eyes. Remember, there are six muscles around each eye. And the tracking ability of eyes is an indication of brain function. Which so you're coming to me today because the pain in the left hip. Yeah. It's general, like, uh, coordination. Yeah, I can see it in that, especially that left eye of yours. Talk about your back, kiss up. This is our manual muscle test exam. We're looking for the facilitation or inhibition, meaning strength or weakness, of the muscles of the doc's body. From the top, doc, you ready? Push up. Up, 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 up. What's wrong with me? Go! Why am I never able to hold it? Push up. Because you don't get enough care. Push up. I'm sure there's people that up, up, up. Are, can hold it just fine. And I'm not getting any up, 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 up. Push up, up, up. Yeah, that's true. There are. <laughs> now push out. Push out for me. Are you adjusting me today? Sure. Pull towards your head. The doc's right hip flexor is facilitated, which is normal. Her left hip flexor is inhibited. This is abnormal. I want to Good double job. check, and it's inhibited. <laughs> Uh, push towards me. Her left pec is inhibited. Push towards the door. Her right pec is facilitated. I want you to try this for me. I want you to make a right fist. This is to increase the activation of the right cerebellum and it has no impact. However, her left hand does have an impact. It actually fires up her system. And this knee, pull. You rest for a second. Here I'm going to gap the doc's TMJ. We're going to screen for some general TMJ dysfunction. Now, in gapping of the jaw, if there's an issue, it should have been on display here, and she should have facilitation. She did not. Okay. We wanted to be hyper-specific. We tried her left TMJ, which once again had no impact. However, her right TMJ did have an impact. I was not expecting this. Push up. Push towards me. Wow. You're strong, you got strong for a loop today. Why? Well, you're falling to the right, which is indicating some type of right sided issue. Then your right hand was off initially, and you're having problems up and to the right. All right sided issues. Your finger to nose were normal both sides, so that was not any indication. You were having a global weakness which is not one side specific. You had the inhibition of your left pec and facilitation of your right pec, so that didn't really give me any clues. Initially, your TMJ showed no issue until we went to the right side. 
you had a left hip flexor that was inhibited. The left hip flexor is associated with the left cerebellum, which is associated with the right red nucleus, which is associated with the left hip flexor. Your left fist improved your strength. So this is the pattern I'm getting. It's not clear. It's not specific one side or the other. So it shouldn't be that way. So here I'm going to use aromatherapy, a scent that is specific in her right nostril. And this is to make an attempt to stimulate her right hemisphere, the right hemisphere of her brain. Now, usually when we think of aromatherapy, we think of it in a diffuser for the whole room, and that's great. But this is specifically to stimulate her right hemisphere to see what impact it has upon her muscle test. For sure. I go back to re-examine her strength test, her muscle test, and it facilitates all of her muscles. And this is without a chiropractic adjustment. So this is the power of aromatherapy when it's done correctly. When we think of breathing in things, they have a stimulatory effect upon us and they can light up the brain. And the reason they can activate the brain is that the brain's sensors or receptors starting in the nose and then going through the olfactory tract back into the hypothalamus, the olfactory cortex, the hippocampus, the amygdala, and then it ends in the reticular formation. The reticular formation are a bunch of nuclei in the brainstem of activation of consciousness. So here I'm predominantly stimulating the right side. My hands and my feet have been so cold lately. Cool. Sometimes like, they cannot warm up. All right, so let's talk about that for a moment. One of the things that causes us problems in life is stress. And you'll notice this is why the name of my practice is called De-Stress Chiropractic. Now, in relation to being cold, what can cause a person to have cold hands and cold feet? Well, what can happen is you can have either an autoimmune condition and or you can have receptors change shape so that thyroid hormones become deactivated. One of the causes of that our toxicity in our environment. So whether it's toxicity from pollution, from cars, from automobiles. So if you happen to live next to a place where you're getting a lot of industrial pollution, uh, also there's a lot of industrial cleaning and products, of course, lately with COVID, those can be an impact. And if you happen to live next to a little farming lot where they're using pesticides, these can be environmental toxins that are causing you to have cold hands and cold feet. However, Mold can also cause these issues. So if you're living in a place that has mold, this can be impacting your blood, which is impacting your ability to generate heat. One of the great contributors are plastics, and more importantly, the chemicals in plastics. Sadly, all of our hygiene products are in plastics. So the chemicals from the container um, get transferred into the product inside, and then we place that product on our skin or in our mouth or in our hair, and that's how those toxins those pollutants get into us, those can be causing an issue. But one of the greatest contributors are our diet. Foods such as wheat, corn, soy, dairy, eggs, fish, shellfish, and nuts. Also, a few other unknown ones are mustard and vinegar. And lastly, nitrates. Nitrates in meats can cause this inhibitory effect of thyroid hormones causing a person to be cold. And basically these things have an impact upon our blood, upon our immune system. So doc, these are some things I'm going to recommend that you look at. Good, push up. Great, push toward me. Okay, those are all so much better, push towards the door. I want you to go walk for me and then come back from the table. So after her aromatherapy treatment, she feels stronger, so this is a good sign. Something she needs to continue on her own. I want to go back and recheck a basic muscle to see if there's any inhibition. There is not. This is a good sign. And I want to treat the doc's left side of her body for left cerebellar input. Here I want to adjust her left shoulder and cerebellar inputs. Push up. Okay, go walk for 
three again. And then we're gonna recheck the belt. Top of foot, start over there again for me. Heel the toe, let's see how you do. I wanted to go back and recheck the dock's balance. She gets off a little too of a shaky start, but overall it's improved. You can't go faster if you want. I can or I can't? You can. Okay, good. Give me your back. Can I go my car? This is a thoracic distraction. Why don't you try that test one more time? Hit it to a test. I think that was what I needed. Because I feel it right here. Doc also looks more alert at this point. And it's like, like a... It's a release and you can breathe. Yeah. Heal the toe. However, her balance is a little off after that adjustment. Mm -hmm. So we need to correct a few other things. Well, it doesn't mean you don't have other things out. <laughs> right. Oh, man. I really needed that. All right, Doc, good job. Uh, right foot forward for me. Eyes now remember, initially she was falling to the right on this test. Now she's falling to the left. Good job. Put the right foot forward again. Now notice how she's more steady in the center with a tendency to fall to the left. Okay. Right, Bring this heel to your back. Don't let me straighten your leg. Try again. Go. Don't let me pull. You are trying, right? Now here what I'm doing is I'm challenging her sacrum in one direction and seeing if it's strengthening her hamstrings and it does not in either direction. So I make a decision to try her L5 and that facilitates her hamstrings. That's the area I'll be adjusting. Try again. Remember I told you I thought they dropped my leg during surgery, like when they were transporting me to the other table? Yeah, and I as a part of most of my treatments, we do some massage therapy and or trigger point therapy. Try again. One of the questions that I'm asked often is what style do I use? And the style is basic, basic chiropractic with some chiropractic neurology and muscle testing. What really matters is the amplitude and velocity as it changes from the patient. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> the amount I'm putting into Monty there, or Faye here, or into Carol here, is going to be different based on the patient and their ability to handle particular adjustments. The doc I need to be cautious with because her system is fragile. Doc, push up. Go. Wonderful, I love that. What is that thing on the foot? Luckily, I have another video posted demonstrating the flexure withdrawal reflex.